players are ready and D2 starts off with Paladin while Nerea starts off with Druid. Okay. So we see the mulligans right now. Bomb Lover, also the new flavor of the metagame, being played 17 times, if I recall correctly. That is correct. So, a new new popular card which is being played in almost every single deck. And uh, from Nerea, we have kinda a really safe hand. Yeah, definitely. The Innovate is uh, what puts Druid off the top in the, over the top in the early game, gets uh, a huge advantage on the board, applies a lot of pressure, that minion that gets innovated out, and um, yeah, I mean, White Growth is preferable in those slower kind of matchups, uh, but... If he's even playing White Growth, we still, are not know, uh, we still don't know which kind of Druid this is. Uh, we can just guess, it might be the Ramp Druid, it might be the Mid Ramp Druid without White Growth, we'll have to see that, but... Look at D2's hand. Two oh, yeah. Master of Battle. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, we see the Combolicious hand uh, from D2 right there. Double Master for Battle, as well as some good cards to go along with it. Sort of Justice and Life Juggler and Equality. Oh man. This, I'm, this is harsh. For this, this is going to be really rough once that Master oh. of Battle hits the board. As, with the Sword of Justice, all the, all the minions that spawn from the Master for Battle get buffed by the Sword of Justice. Before the... A new weapon will replace this sort of justice. That's, That's a very right. important, um, very important order of cards being played. And also, what is no worth noting, that if the paladin will attack with a freshly new uh, sort of justice at the same turn, that kind of indicates that the next turn will be master for battle, right? That's right. That's correct. Um, yeah. Right now. Neria sees that uh, he's, he might be under a lot of pressure soon, therefore he innervates out the Druid in taunt mode. Uh, D2 tries to deal with it by using other Peacekeeper, shrinking the attack, making it um, pretty much useless in terms of the offense. Do you think that maybe he could have used uh, the Haunted Creeper attack before he used the Peacekeeper to spawn the two new minions, which would be 2-2? Two -two? Um, that is certainly a possibility uh, to be considered, however, um, that would also make him vulnerable to swipe um, a little bit. Um, well, not yeah, really. I mean, the, I the mean they get, would be I, to sure, do, I mean, right? sure, they get buffed, but still, um, then the Druid of the Cloud has to trade one away. Um, and also, he wants to keep the charges for the Master of the Master for Battle, I would assume. Well, d definitely the Druid of the Cloud changed the pace of the game, because he didn't... He, he wanted to save the every single... Um, Every single durability of Sword of Justice, 43 tokens from Master for Battle, and right now we are seeing an insane combo with Knife Juggler. Yeah, the Juggler's the juggle's not necessarily the best in this situation, only hitting a minion once. However, he's still got the um, Haunted Creeper that he can just suicide into something to throw additional but knives with the Knife Juggler. I don't think he will do this because even if the so uh, even if the knives will hit the Yeti twice, that's still out of range of killing the Yeti with um, his Light Justice, which was spawned by Master for Battle. Yeah, of course. Um, so right now, Neria, under a lot of pressure here, he has the coin to um, yeah, maybe accelerate something a little bit, but um, there's not much he can do here against this threatening board. He has a swipe, he has a force of nature that can be played, but um, he, needs a spell he will definitely here. not be able. He will not be able to clear the whole board. That's for sure. Oh yes, and he can't really play swipe also because that will spawn two new spiders from the uh, um, haunted creeper. That's right. So, do you think loaded is the correct play here, or maybe just use force of nature to clear, um, well, the tokens? Apparently, for sure you have to kill uh, the knife juggler. That's the main enemy uh, for Druid here, because uh, Paladin will play minions every single turn with his hero power, and not removing the Knife Juggler will bite him back at even next uh, in the next turn. While well, Swipe is a good play to get some damage off the board immediately, it um, doesn't, uh, doesn't establish any sort of board presence, therefore he chooses to play the low tap to just maybe get an even better Swipe next turn, and uh, have some board presence to finish off uh, surviving minions. That's true. He also prevents uh, for um, 
the equality being played next turn, so he um, D2 won't be able to clear the minions with just uh, the one ones he has on the board. But we are also seeing two new cards from GBG being played this turn. One of is is I think one of the most popular cards right now is the piloted shredder, which uh, replaced Yeti. Yeah, I mean, most of the decks. Yeti was uh, a staple for many decks for a long time, um, but now it got uh, kind of replaced by Pilot and Shredder um, in many decks. So, um, yeah, I mean, Pilot and Shredder seems to be the four drop of choice for many of those players. I mean, it's such a good value minion as well. Um, if you think Harvest Golem is a good card, then you'll definitely think that Pilot and Shredder is a good card because he offers the uh, same um, value that Harvest Golem does. And both are max now. Harvest Golem did get an update with the new expansion, got the new keyword, which is Mech, and this also gets um, some points when, when it comes to tech synergy that can be built uh, with the new cards from the GVG expansion, but right now we're also seeing the Bomb Lobo being the, being the MVP of the turn, which just happened to finish the 5-5 that was played last turn by Nairia with a single blow from a... I want, to touch on the fact, right? I want to touch on um, the, mech, uh, the, uh, the mech synergy that you spoke about. We have yet to see a deck, uh, some the player bring a deck uh, based on mechs um, to, to this tournament. I hope they, there will be one at least. I sure, I'm sure, I'm sure someone brought one. Um, maybe Firebat and Hosty, who play Rogue, uh, are playing a mech centric Rogue, yep. who knows. But uh, I mean, I definitely want to see some mech synergy because that's like one of the most popular themes in GVG. Right. So I really hope that one of those players will eventually play a mech-based deck. Right now, for D2, it looks really good. He has a huge board, and the Druid is only at 10 health. Equality will, able to, will be able to drink that Sludge Belcher. Druid, in general, struggles with decks uh, that can spawn the board easily and replace everything that Druid was fighting against with their own minions, because Druid kind of plays a low amount of minions themselves, so how can you win against a deck that just floats the board, right? Yeah, and I mean, if that you don't was the case here. If you don't have the mass removal, then it, it's definitely hard. I mean, you've seen the power of Sword of Justice in this matchup for sure, because Druid sure has the, the only mass removal Druid play ours is Swipe, and Swipe wasn't enough to deal with the buffed one once. Yeah, you you Justice. have to get like a that much Falnos to that, and that's also not enough to kill a quarter mustard yeah. um, silverhand recruits. So, I think that Paladin might be the new deck of choice when you're playing against Druids. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that you have to consider nowadays. That Paladin being so strong, um, decks, uh, other classes have to adapt to that. Maybe we might see some changes in Druids play more spell damage so they can deal with the tokens better, like Bloodmish Talnos, as you said, or maybe just play other spells, like, for example, Starfall could be useful maybe. against those one ones. Mm -hmm. get well, Starfall with Bloodmish Talnos actually gets uh, gets rid of the buffs, so that might be the answer here. Yeah. People, and well, in general, people and pro players also, uh, will have to find some new answers to that Paladin deck, right? Definitely. I mean, Paladin, def uh, we've seen, has been performing very, very well in this tournament, and um, yeah, definitely a good choice for um, every player who brought it to the tournament. Sure, sure. And now D2 has to pick something against Nairia's um, Paladin. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, against the D2 <laughs> Paladin. Uh, so Nairia will go, I think, with Warrior, right? That That should be the... Yeah. That should be that the answer here. Warrior is getting picked by Neria to counter the Paladin, hopefully. I mean, we've seen this matchup before and it did not favor the Warrior. Well, it's kind of hard. Unless there are no buffs for the Silverhand Recruit, then the Warrior has some easy times dealing with 1-1 one -one creatures, right? He has Whirlwinds, he has Death Spites, uh, maybe even the Ghouls all the, or, or maybe the mechanical ships from GVG expansion. Those are tools to um, battle some really huge boards from the Paladin, but that's still not enough if there will be a Quartermaster. Yeah. I mean, we've, uh, Neria definitely knows what he's doing. He could have gone for the Paladin Mirror, but he felt confident in his warrior that warrior can beat the Paladin, so maybe he has something 
uh, we don't know about uh, that gives him an extra edge in this matchup. Maybe mind control tech. Who knows? That kind of, this card kind of might see some play in uh, in future events. Oh yeah, definitely. With the rising popularity of Paladin uh, that relies on Master of Battle, mind control tech is definitely a good addition. It's only for free mana. It acts like a removal for anything that will be on the board. Because if there will be a master for battle with quarter master, that's already for minions. Yeah. And the fiery war axe in opening hand of Neria, uh, which is very important against any kind of deck that um, war is facing. So lucky for Neria, this will be a good start for him. Also, they should made in the new inclusion. In the warrior decks, almost every single player that was bringing warrior in this tournament, and there are 14 players playing warrior, uh, I think there was like 17 copies of Shield Maiden being used. I also want to talk about Fiery War X being a, a really good card in the opening hand against most matchups, right? But however, against Paladin, we see those minions that Paladin has. I mean, what does Fireworks uh, want to attack? There's nothing really good to attack in the early turns. You don't want to use the durability charges on one once. Well, you have to. Or you don't want to use it on to pop a divine shield, really. Uh, yeah, divine shield is bot. a problem. You're right here, and shield and mini bot will will be a threat here. There's no easy way of getting rid of it. It's just it's just so inefficient to um, yeah use the Fireworks um, against those minions that Paladin has in the early game, it's just not... doesn't seem worth it, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, of course. How cool, do, uh, how cool would, be the, uh, would be a possibility of playing a double Divine Shield on one creature? Oh, a double Divine Shield? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that would be pretty cool, but... <laughs> unfortunately, that is not possible in Hearthstone. Not uh, yet, not yet. We, see, we have seen, like, a quadruple Wind Fury in this expansion. Look, this so is interesting knows. right now. Um, we talked about it yesterday, about um, people blowing their mass removal too early, and uh, Neria is taking his time. He could have gone for Acolyte of Pain into Whirlwind, for example, and then mm -hmm. kill off the mini bot with the Fiery War Axe. However, he is taking his time, waiting for a bigger board, because the Paladin, what he's going to do is just spawn more one ones for now, and um, yeah, I mean, he will probably just kill the one ones before the Quartermaster can hit the board. Therefore, he's using right now to do that. In the result, he just stole one turn from the Paladin. Exactly. I mean, it's all about uh, timing your mass removal spells correctly, and this is uh, exactly what Neria did here. Very well played, for sure. So, the thing is, he has to um, kill the Echoid of Pain as soon as possible. If Warrior gets more than one card from the Paladin, uh, from, from the Acolyte of Pain, that's a really great disadvantage for the Paladin player, and he got two from that, so that's quite a huge blowout here. And Shield Knight is a great response to a True Silver Champion, because there's no easy way of actually getting uh, that Shield Maiden killed by the sword, unless there's a Seal of Light being used to buff the Paladin attack to six, but the, I don't think D2 is using Seal of Light. We we have seen yesterday someone using that card as a tech to buff um, to 6 attack the, uh, the Paladin's weapon, but right now, do you think... No, he, he won't use the quality here, that's just one minion. Yeah, there are no, so I'm many threats in, pal definitely in not, Warriors deck. Definitely not the quality. I mean... Uh, D2 just has, uh, has a lot of time to deal with this 5-5. Five five. It's not... Warrior does not apply any uh, real pressure at the moment, so right now D2 is just going to establish a little bit of board presence, get a 1-1 one, one and the Haunted Creeper into, in there, um, steal that 1 damage to the Shield Maiden, uh, so he can finish it off with the True Silver later on. Do you think he's keeping the Argent uh, Defender for his Sylvanas? Um, the Argent Protector, you mean? Uh, you, yeah, sorry, Argent Protector. Yeah, the Argent Protector, uh, in this matchup you want to use it um, Offensively, not defensively. So, um, like, just if you have a big minion on the board that is able to attack, then you can use the Argent Protector um, to get advantage out of that attack. He chose so to. Uh, interesting yeah. to note, he chose to attack with a True Silver exactly. immediately. Um, to bluff that he doesn't have the equality in his hand. I mean, I mean he's just he's just confident uh, that one of the minions will survive, uh, that, uh, so, he can so that minion can attack the Shield Maiden. 
Yeah, but this this uh, this will also mean that Wooder can play some big minions um, because he didn't see equality being played and the attack was kind of like showing that there's a weakness in the Paladin's hand right now. So the Sylvanas will get a fast answer here. And I think we'll be seeing quality and true silver champion to get rid of both. The the problem is you don't want to blow your equality for one minion or even two minions necessarily. This is the only equality that um, D2 has right now, so therefore he needs to be careful about playing that. Um, he still has there's definitely hands. a lot of big threats in the warrior deck, so um, equality mm -hmm. is like kind of the last resort I would say to deal with that, to deal with those minions. If he is able to deal with those minions in some other way, then he will use that. But he will definitely not play equality too early. Right now, though, it seems like D2 sees no other option except for using equality right now. Well, he, after the, if he would just allow to uh, both of those minions attack his face, it will be leaving him at 10 points of HP. That's not what you want against a warrior, which can just. Uh, burst you out with Gromash and Taskmaster or Gromash with Woodwind or whatever. Yeah. The problem that um, D2 had here is that he wanted to clear the Sylvanas this turn for sure, as well as the Shield Maiden which only had one HP left, um, so um, that he can actually play his own big minion like a Tyrion or Sylvanas next turn. That's true. Oh, a second Shield Maiden. Yeah, the warrior is definitely applying a lot of pressure here, and this is what the warrior has to do against Paladin, because uh, the longer the game goes, the more it favors the Paladin with the hero power. The inclusion of Shield Maidens in the warrior deck changed a lot uh, the mid-range, uh, the mi mid-game of the warrior. Oh, so definitely. I mean, uh, it just gave warrior a little bit more of a big punch. If you compare it to like other players um, choose to play Armorsmith. Instead of Shield Maiden, and Armorsmith is not good for attacking. It's more of Definitely. it's, it's uh, more of a defensive card uh, against early game decks. But uh, Shield Maiden for the mid game or late game strategy definitely a stronger card than Armorsmith. And look also at this: just because of the Shield Maiden being played less than Warrior has nine points of armor, so you can easily deal with this thing. Oh, look at this! Shield Slam, and then Harrison Jones to just. Oh, that man. is a big play right there for <laughs> Neria. I mean, he felt confident in this matchup, and rightfully so. I mean, look at it. He's getting so much advantage out of his cards, and he has a huge life lead, and, a bo and board position, and more cards in hand. I mean, definitely Neria in a very good spot here. D2 will have a hard time coming back from this. He has quartermasters in hand, but not no master for battle to enable those properly. Mm. I don't see I don't see uh, D2 um, being able to come back here that easily. There are three legendary minions and two executes in Nereus' hand. Th he can deal with anything that will hit the board with ease. Yeah, I mean right now we might just see Ragnaros at the board. He's oh, not opting for it. Now he's he's waiting. He's waiting. He's probably gonna play Acolyte with Hero Power in that case. No, he's not even playing Acolyte. He's just Hero Powering. Okay, so next turn oh, wow. will be probably Baron Geddon with Acolyte of Pain. Yeah, I guess he want he really wants to get that additional <laughs> value out of Acolyte. So yeah, so yeah, sometimes it's just not good to play Acolyte of Pain on uh, without enabling it immediately. Because then it might get silenced or something like that, and you don't get any card draw. But uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter in this situation, I would say. Because <laughs> Nadria already has so many good cards in hand, uh, even if the card gets silenced, it doesn't matter. So right now we're gonna see Knife Juggler, 4D2, into Hero Power Quartermaster. Yeah, that Quartermaster, a little bit weak. You re usually want to buff at least two minions with it. Um, only buffing one is kind of a desperation move, but he needs the board advantage right now to get back into this game. It's still not a bad move, though. Yeah, he ne I mean he needs to do it in order to like apply some pressure. Because right now he's dropping dangerously low. The good thing for uh, D2 though is that he still has their own hands. So if he is getting into range for the, uh, for Gromash or something like that. Then uh, he can get out of it easily with his little hands. That's true. 
But Lion Hands takes a whole turn, so that's the time that can Warrior use just to put some really big threat uh, on the board, and also Paladin wants to use uh, in normal cir circumstances the Lion Hands after Alexstrasza being played, but Paladin is already at 11 points of health. And there's no no answer to this Baron Gedon. Yeah. So is he being forced here to play Leon Hands? I think so. Yeah, he needs to find a solution, but uh, there is no solution for two mana that deals with this Baron Gedon. Some back in the day, some people used to play Humility uh, for one mana. It would have been able to deal with the Baron Gedon, but uh, and, uh, yeah, with addition of uh, GBG cards, it's definitely not possible anymore. <laughs> There's no enough there's, spots. There's not enough slots in your yeah. There's not enough space in your deck for that. Mm. Interesting enough, Neria is also playing Armor Smith, so he didn't cut the Armor Smith from his deck, even if when he's playing two Shield Knight. It's yeah. still important for him to get the early defensive minions, which have so much synergy with the Warrior deck in general. We are. We are seeing, yes, we are seeing yesterday. Uh, I think Hyped was using a ship instead of Armorsmith in his warrior deck. That's right. Oh man, Ragnaros hitting the face and. <laughs> oh, the RNG god. <laughs> oh my god, and I don't see. I don't see Dito coming back from this. He cannot deal with everything. He would have needed an equality for sure. So he, he needs a tree of life. Well. Imagine, imagine he had equality, then he could have used knife juggler into master of battle and maybe snipe everything away. Oh, uh, honorable Subaru. Yeah, I mean Naria, believing in his warrior deck to be able to beat uh, Dito's paladin, and he managed to do it. So congratulations, Naria. Luckily out for Naria. D2 didn't hit any master for battle early enough to combo with, with the two Carter masters he had in his hand, uh, so that was quite lucky. But still, I think that Neria would pull this off. He had a really good, um, good, um, good cards in his uh, disposal, and well, this matchup is kind of swingy in both directions. I think equality proves to um, is the the best answer to board to, that can. Warrior spawn and every every single minion that can warrior be uh, pl warrior can play on the board is just being swiped by the equality consecration. But we also didn't see the consecration from um, Paladin, right? Yeah, to totally. I mean, um, D2 unfortunately was kind of forced um, to use that equality a little bit too early for my taste. Um, therefore, he didn't have it in the later game when those big threats, those really big threats, started to hit the board. The Ragnaros, the Baron Gaden. He mm -hmm. had no solution for those. Yeah, he had no, but uh, he had no answer to those. But as you said, uh, as you said, he was forced to use the equality. He was kind of being threatened by low HP with those two five yeah. attack minions. That is the power of the shield maiden right there. I really like Definitely the card. Definitely the MVP in that game. I would assume. Uh, so yeah, I mean, right now um, D2 has the choice between warrior mirror matchup or go for the druid. So what will we see here? What do you think? Druid. Druid is the natural answer to a warrior deck, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously it depends on what kind of uh, druid it is, uh, but in general, um, yeah, druid has uh, had a positive win rate against warrior from what I can tell. That's true, that's true. Um, warrior also struggles. It ha has kind of the same weakness um, against flooding the board, like, unless you get a brawl, in your hand, you can't really deal with uh, minions being spawned um, from Druid here. Uh, we'll see how that goes. So we get uh, we get information that um, D2 will in fact play that Druid deck, mm -hmm. um, just as we expected. So um, I'm curious if there will be some new inclusion from GVG in this Druid. Yeah, but there's a lot of good stuff that you can play actually. I mean, um, I for example saw. Um, Troxor being used in Druid, for example. It um, fits the strategy really like well. If you if you go for, for example, low tap and then follow it up with Troxor, just denying any kind of spells. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so insane. So Druid can, in that case, uh, est uh, keep establishing the board, keep overextending the board, and uh, not getting punished for it. That's true. Also, Dr. Boom is the new flavor for the Druids. Instead of scenarios that we were talking about it yesterday, um, Doctor Boom might be 
the most underrated legendary before GVG was uh, released. Like no one thought that this card, apart from Strifecore, um, that this card would be so popular. Yeah, and right now we see D2 playing that kind of standard um, so Force of Nature Savage Road Root, I would assume. But uh, he's if we using take a look at Shade of Yetis. Maximum. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's better than regular Yeti, right? Maybe he uses both and he wants to ensure that he will have a 4 drop after turn 2 Wild Grove. It is actually interesting that um, this is a mechanical Yeti and not a um, piloted shredder, because that's usually what you uh, come to expect nowadays um, for, for those type of Druid decks. So maybe he's using both and then he also plays some synergy with Max. I don't know. I mean, the, the Yeti is definitely better than the normal Yeti because the spare part that you get um, might actually give you a huge edge. Oh man, Wild Grove top deck on turn 2. This is a huge change of game game plan for D2 right here. Yeah, it definitely allows him to <laughs> uh, accelerate into that mechanical Yeti, apply a lot of pressure to the Warrior. Warrior doesn't have any way of dealing it with it except well, for using yeah, Taskmaster Execute. Execute which he probably will do right now because it's an efficient and a good answer right now. You have to do it. Also worth noting is that Shade of Nextramas, which is in D2's hand, is one of the best minions against Warrior because he can't really deal with it unless there's a Bomb Lover and the Shade of Nextramas is below 5 points of health yet. So, um, yeah, the Shade of Nextramas is also a card that uh, gives Warrior a lot of trouble. The only way for Warrior to de actually deal with it uh, most of the time is a Brawl, to be fair. Yep. The Shade can just stay in hiding forever and grow and grow and grow until it eventually gets big enough to finish the job by itself along with the Force of Nature 7 draw combo. A huge chunk of burst damage. Both players did get the same spare part from the Mechanical Yeti, uh, which means they, they will both have a one mana Ice Lance to the disposal yeah. against some minions. I mean, um, I also like the, inclu uh, the inclusion for Mechanical Yeti um, because that I think that the spare parts um, Are don't more beneficial? hurt the, the spare parts don't hurt um, the Druid as much as they would hurt the other one, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, his opponent, because the minions, um, for example, with this freezing coolant, like. You do, there's really nothing that you can do as uh, as warrior, I think, with it, uh, as much as the druid. Like, the druid can, for example, freeze a big threat from the warrior, um, and yeah, the warrior can f only freeze like one of multiple threats uh, that the druid has. The druid can just uh, freeze the board and keep pushing for damage, while warrior kind of just can only prevent one attack from one minion. Also, look, there's another mech uh, in the two's hands right now. That's the bigger brother of Piloted Shredder, right here, that's the Sky Golem. Oh yeah, that's also a card that we've been seeing uh, in multiple Druid decks already. So but we will not see him being played right now. That's the perfect turn for Ancient of Law to draw two cards. Ah, uh, you don't know. I mean, we might we might uh, see that play that I was mentioning. Just, over uh, just uh, establish the board and in the meantime freeze that enemy minion so it cannot trade. Oh right, the emergency coolant can be used uh, with the piloted Skyle Golem just to keep that 5-5 five, five shield maiden from attacking for one turn. This might the, be ancient lore, the Ancient of Lore would have just been trade, would have just got traded um, by the shield maiden. So therefore, yeah, we see that play takes place. Very good, free, very good spare parts indeed right now. Well, now we'll see a similar response, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sludge Belcher and <laughs> the free, uh, Emergency Coolant right here. Yeah. Actually, we might right now see the Shade get out of hiding. Um, because right now it has big enough stats to deal with either Sludge Belcher or the Shield Maiden. Mech Warper? Look at this. There is some synergy here. Oh, that's also another reason why... Um, it acts like a kind of wild growth, exactly. right, for the druid. Exactly. It's like it's like wild growth for the mechanical yeti. That's pretty sick. With a with a body, so it's even better than wild growth at some kind of point of view. Yeah, this might actually be the reason why he also plays mechanical yeti instead of um, the shredder because it gives it has more health 
and the shredder can, in the early game can be dealt with fairly easily because it only has three health. So some two mana spell or two mana minion uh, often enough can deal with it. But uh, the mechanical yeti definitely has more resilience with that additional two health. Oh wow! Look, look at this warrior going face. Druid wow. is already at ten points of health. Yeah, I mean that's the that's the that's probably because. Uh, <laughs> He didn't choose to attack with the shade. Might, that might have cost him actually the game. That's yeah, because he needed he needed he needed to alleviate some pressure off the board, I would say, and by not attacking with that uh, shade, um, yeah, that might have cost him the game. Maybe. Is there a way of dealing with that board and be safe from Gromash or Ragnaros? Because both are available on turn eight from. Uh, Neria here, so let's think. He can play the Dirt of the Claw in taunt mode to well, kinda be resilient from the Gromash, but still he has to deal with every single creature from Warrior's board. And yeah, that's. Well, is it possible? He can silence the Belcher, he can kill off the Belcher then, and kill off the Maiden, and maybe spawn a taunt minion from the pilot in Sky Golem. He can also just uh, taunt up the Druid of the Claw here. Yeah, but still, uh, there's 5 points from uh, from the Death Spite available. That is true, but it's the, it's the play that uh, it's the play that D2 has to go for here. He, he has to use no Innervate to Hero Power to be... Oh yeah, you're right! So he actually gets out of range of Gromash. Very well played. So, yeah, Naria right now does not have enough damage to deal with... Um, He's one off and <laughs> is lethal oh. from Druid next turn almost, right? He, if the... How much oh, wow. damage it What a would great be? turnaround by D2 actually. How much damage I did that? not expect that. He will kill the Druid of the Claw here. So he will be at 34, 34 points of health. He will use one of his big minions so he will not armor up. So this is 34 points of health. And Druid will have 7, 10, 12 attack from the three minions on board, plus 14 from the combo, so that's 26, that's 32 damage, 2 off. It's still not over though, I mean, D2 knows, uh, I mean, Naria knows obviously that uh, he cannot kill with Gromash this turn, therefore he's probably just gonna drop a Ragnaros. Here's the Druid of the Claw. Oh, oh, he's going with the Gromash here. That's interesting. Wow. Oh, he will. We forgot about the armor from the Armorsmith. That's two more armor, so he, um, so the druid will be ten off. Yeah, that's uh, true, but it's, still, it's still really dangerous, to be fair. And oh man, hmm. maybe the rack would have been kind of a safer play. I I don't know. I I think so too that the rack was the correct play. I guess here. he really wanted to enable that Grummer though. But uh, so now he does. He didn't have any more enablers in his hand for the Grummer, so maybe he just wanted to get the damage. And maybe he top deck a weapon. Um, to but you can't deal with the. Uh, you can't attack with the weapon because there's a water elemental. Yeah, of course. But maybe water elemental attacks Gromash. Who knows? But we see right now, already. Uh, I mean, it's not enough damage, right? <laughs> it is. Calculated it's already. not not enough. Um, D two will be, if I'm not mistaken, five off, right now. It's thirty two damage. Yeah, you're right. Uh, thirty two damage total. Um, so so what, will, what are we gonna see here? Probably a big game hunter. Big game hunter, power up, and shade of next Nextramus. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not play too many minions because uh, because of the brawl. To, uh, yeah. brawl. Yeah. But well, you don't need. Yeah, you don't need to play any minions. You have to set up for little next turn. So you just attack with those minions on board, freeze the warrior, which is super important right here. Yeah, that water elemental <laughs> from <laughs> the piloted sky golem. <laughs> Paying off in a big way, especially if the warrior actually top decks the weapon now. Is there a way? There's no way that the warrior can pull off this. Wow. He has to rack now. Yeah, yeah that's the only that's way. And now 20% chance of winning. What's gonna hit? Oh man. The Ragnaros? Oh! Some excitement going on. What's it gonna be? Neria, don't keep us waiting any longer. <laughs> he will rope. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> It's oh, 20 will, chance, will but there is a wait. chance. That's some BM right here. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's making D2 sweat right now. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> this area is just enjoying this. <laughs> oh man. Smack face. Oh, th this will be some 
serious spawns from Twitch chat <laughs> after that. Maybe he's just still pray saying his prayers to Iron Jesus. <laughs> Maybe he's convincing him. Yes. Oh man. <laughs> 90 seconds of shame. <laughs> It's like channeling all your energy into a spirit bomb and <laughs> like a <Aww>. Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like Goku from <laughs> Dragon Ball. Here it comes. Ten seconds Kamehameha. left. Kamehameha. <laughs> oh. Oh man. Five, oh man. four, three, two, one, and bless off. Well, to be fair, D2 had the water elemental from the RNG2 and that kinda saved him in at some point of the game, right? Because there was no answer from the water apart from the Ragnaros, yeah. but that Ragnaros actually pulled it off. <laughs> oh wow. man, that was crazy right there. This will be a highlight for sure. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I mean, Neria definitely making the wait worth it. Holy crap, that was insane. True, oh man, how can, how can those players even top that? <laughs> well, we'll be seeing a mirror match from... Did we have to be forced to, to pick the warrior? So if... It's, it's kind of okay. If D2 will win the mirror match, then he has the warrior against Paladin. So, and we have seen Neria beat Paladin with his warrior. Yeah, but um, I still think, to be fair, that it was uh, based on Not a, poor the draw, but battle? a poor draw from the Paladin. I think um, if the Paladin drew a little bit better there and had uh, the solutions against those late game threats, then uh, it uh, to definitely be honest, would have been uh, gone uh, another way. I think that when Didi was playing the Paladin, uh, he should have played the Ardent Protector on turn 4 when he just hero power wrapped and just pressure the board more, maybe that will be a better thing, but yeah, well, he can change that now, so... Neria on back of his Ragnaros pulled a second win from the Warrior and we'll be seeing the mirror match right now between two Warriors. The second most played class at this tournament right after Warlock. Makes sense. Warrior is by uh, most of the players being called this the single most powerful class in the metagame right now. Yeah, I mean, many players touted Warrior to be the most powerful class, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, I mean, Warrior definitely popular amongst the players. Uh, only two players did not bring the Warrior for this tournament. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now we're going to see a very skillful matchup. Many players, many people actually say, <laughs> think think about this matchup as yeah, the resident sleeper matchup, <laughs> where nothing is happening. But there's actually a lot of mind games going on, and um, you have to really pick your spots with your removals um, to apply them properly and in the right timing. And so, also, um, the card draw is essential in this matchup. Yeah, but also some high impact cards um, reward. Um, good deck building for this mirror matchup. For example, if you include Harrison Jones or not, Harrison Jones uh, mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. change the pace of this game oh, in a big way for sure. Look, there's a bomb blobber. Uh, that's um, D2's hand? Um, that is yeah, correct. Yeah, that's, that's D2's hand. So Armor Smith seeing play, just applying that early game pressure. It's actually fairly relevant um, because chipping away at the armor is important as early as you can. Yes. Because it all comes down in the end to who has more armor usually. Uh, I mean, often it often not it comes down to that because uh, often not the warrior matchup goes to fatigue, and then it, it's decided by who has more armor, pretty much. That's true. He didn't opt to use any of his weapons early, even when he has three in his hand. That's kind of weird, right? He has to find time to actually use all three of those cards. Yeah, but. The thing is, um, he doesn't want to use the fire war axe because uh, he might just. I mean, he would have to use the fire war axe just to a uh, six damage to the face, and that's probably not valuable enough. And uh, well, by the time actually a weapon is relevant for a minion, death bite is probably the safer choice. So he wants to go with the death bite first. The six damage for face that you mentioned is kind of important when there is armor, because you will 
chip the armor off for the potential shield slams that can be played later on. Yeah, I think uh, that is, that is that sure is true, but um, I feel like um, it's not enough damage to be fair, because there's so much armor to be gained from uh, potential shield shields maidens. blocks or shield maidens anyway. Yep. It's already turn 5, it's not a Resident Sleeper match anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we're still gonna see a lot of armoring up, not much action happening on the board because Despite can clear pretty much any minion. That that next play is gonna be big though for um, D2. He has double Acolyte of Pain and Despite with one durability, so next turn he can actually cl potentially clear a minion and draw two cards with two Acolytes. Yeah, and he's missing an Execute uh, if there will be something bigger than 5-5, five, five, but what we actually see that Neruia is only holding a Shield Maiden here, and he doesn't have a coin, so that's not really relevant. The Shield Maiden will be played here, but I it don't will even be know if the Shield Maiden is going to be played. I mean, it, it gets uh, threatened by the Despite, so. So um, you won't play anything? Also. You'll just play Armor Smith here? Yeah, you could also just uh, Shield Block and Armor up, maybe. It's also a possibility. You don't, you don't necessarily want to just throw that Acolyte if it only is able to draw one card, yeah, th but uh, this is actually what Nereia chooses to do right now. Well, he's forcing that the Acolyte of Pain um, will be eaten by the Dev's Bite here. Yeah, that's true, but still, this this play is going to be so big for D2 if he chooses to go with it. A double Acolyte of Pain into attack the, the opposing Acolyte. The opposing Acolyte will only draw one card, whereas your Acolytes will at least draw four cards, I would say. Mm, yeah, but the only answer is Brawl or Silence to that, so... Or Execute, and no one wants to use Execute, so yeah. those Acolytes of Pain. Let the pain speak to me. I wonder if any of the players is playing Blinktrons. <laughs> it's also a little bit dangerous to play double Acolyte. Because <laughs> yeah, that's that's why also that's also why D2 doesn't do it because drawing two cards is good and all, but then he could actually Overdraw. just draw too many cards eventually because yep. then Armorsmith can attack uh, for another card draw, Fire can attack for another card draw. That would make um, he will yeah, use that would actually make D2 overdraw. Well, he can use the coin. Okay, he does use the coin for the death bite, but there is a Harrison Jones waiting. And most likely we'll see play right now. I think so. The Fury Warrix will get rid of the Acolyte of Pain, then the Harrison Jones will kill the Death Spite and enable the Death Rattle trigger, trigger. So he has to kill the Acolyte of Pain first to not uh, give a draw, an additional draw from the Acolyte of Pain. Yeah, that is absolutely correct. It would be most surprising if Harrison Jones doesn't hit the board here. Drawing two cards off of that weapon and putting a 5-3 fi on board, gain gaining also two points of armor. Yeah. It's basically like a hero power without using the hero power. That's right. But with using a whirlwind, just for your creatures. <laughs> that belongs in a hey, what is D2 thinking about here? What is, is he worried about something specific? Maybe he's bluffing? Maybe. No, that's Nereia's hand. Uh, yeah, that's what, uh, that's, that's what I mean, sorry. <laughs> what is the yeah, it, it can be easily messed up when yeah. there are two players playing the exact same class. And almost the exact same decks. Hmm. Alright, what, what is the solution for this? Well, you could see Mad Bomb, um, Bomb Lobber here, I think. Yeah, Yeah, that's the best turn for Bomb Lobber. You'll kill the Armorsmith first, then play the Bomb Lobber. It's kind of similar as uh, like to the, 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 the Harrison Jones the turn before. Yeah, it kind of it kind of sucks that um, the Bomb Lobber gets uh, dealt with by Harry Warwick. But uh, yeah, I, he needed to play that Bomb Lobber in order to deal with the Harrison Jones properly. He didn't have any good solution for it. Shield Maiden. 12 points of armor, 14 with the hero power. That's insane. Yeah, D2 needs something good like a shield slam. Oh, oh and there it is. <laughs> you call it! <laughs> shield slam is able to deal with that shield maiden very effectively. He can play his own shield maiden after that, establish some port, port, uh, some sort of board presence. So we actually have seen a lot of card being played in this game, like a lot. 
like four weapons at least and many creatures and they are still on maximum health points with armor well, he, he decides to draw an additional card with the deck light of pain thanks to taskmaster just getting more options second few war eggs. we're definitely seeing shield slam oh we don't see shield slam being used here Interesting. Yeah, because I, I'm, I'm wondering about this. Why I mean, it's okay because he kind of wants to keep the shield slam for a really important threat. Shield maiden. Um, D2 doesn't think that shield maiden is a worthy target um, to kill because he can actually kill it with fiery warx uh, and taskmaster, but he he will lose a lot of armor by doing so. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering. Armor I, is really important in this matchup. I think the thought process. Um, was that he didn't draw any executes yet, and he has to get an answer for a big creature that will be coming uh, going up, uh, uh, that will be spawned by the, by um, Neria in the next turns. But I think he didn't f um, anticipate a low tip, which can kind of mess up this turn right now. Well, Shield Maiden is an answer to the low tip because he uh, uh, she creates the armor without a spell. So it actually doesn't yeah. really matter, but then the shield slam is still costing six points of mana. So without a coin and turn ten, you're not able to combo those two cards in the same turn. Yeah, D2 definitely has a lot of options here, and um, he could play Shield Maiden. He could also play <laughs> Harrison Jones, but he chooses to go for the Ragnaros. And uh, yeah, I mean, not even attacking, not even killing off one of his um, one of the enemy's minions because uh, this gives Ragnaros an increased chance of actually hitting a minion itself. Hmm. And right now, There's Neria so has the answers. perfect answer to that Ragnaros yeah. with a big game hunter if he wants to do that. He can even shield slam here. Yeah, he can do that too. Chooses to go for Alex Raza into shield slam. Yeah, that's Very the best good. play here. Shield slam phase, man. Oh. And this is what I've been talking about. Now D2 actually has no armor whatsoever to deal with this big threat. So therefore Shield Slam is kind of useless right now. Yeah. Yep. He doesn't have Execute to deal with this um, to deal with this um, Alex Traza. So the only way of dealing with Alex Traza is by Shield Block Shield Slamming your own Sylvanas maybe. <laughs> you think so? Well, he can still play shield Oh, that's maiden. execute. That that is big. That is shield. exactly what. That is exactly what. No, no, no. He, he will go with shield maiden and shield slam the Alex Traza. Oh, that's what he's doing. Okay. Yeah. Well, he could have gone for Taskmaster execute the Alex Traza as well, and then um, shield slam the low tap. That also would have been enough. It might have been better because now the Sylvanas has no way to be activated in his turn. Oh man, Ragnar is going for the face. That sets up lethal for next turn. But uh, D2 still has another shield made to get out of lethal range. Which still, he's in a really right tough spot. He he's really low, and if I were uh, if I was counting uh, right, I think that Neria already used every single fear warx and um, death spite in this game. So he's kind of feeling safe from the weapons, unless there's a gore hole. And now the question is, will we see Gromish hit play immediately? Apparently not. He chooses to, first of all, kill off this, those enemy minions. Actually, he's confused on the shield maiden. His own shield maiden will be played, keeping uh, that second taskmaster um, for this Gromash. It's very important. I think that not using that shield slam when he could have against the first shield maiden was very important and crucial to the game. But l luckily, second shield slam entered the game here. So, will he use it right now? I think he has to. Shield slam into hero power and Sylvanas. Yeah, dropping a Sylvanas on empty board like this is, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it, can, it can be kind of um, a waste. But you don't have an enabler, enabler for the Sylvanas anyway, because you already used both shield slams. Yeah, I said he goes for the Grummer, uh, for the Gorhal though. Um, the, qu <laughs> the only problem with Gorhal right now is 
you cannot really attack minions so much anymore because uh, you're a little bit low on health and all That's the armor true. all the armor givers um, are gone now pretty much and it we are is at almost 50 points of health yeah I mean he definitely got a better use out of his minions that's for sure. Both players are not opting to use their Sylvanas. Hmm. So he can use the Gorhal for this minion though. Yeah, this minion is definitely <laughs> killable with Gorhal, that's for sure. But then he has no follow up because you can't really use Fairy War X, you won't play the Harrison Jones. Or maybe you have to play the Harrison Jones right here. You have to put something on the board, I think. Yeah, I feel like Sylvanas had to be played there. He's not opting for this Sylvanas. Dr. Boom! Oh my goodness. Uh, awesome. Yeah, that is definitely something that uh, can close out the game for an area eventually. The, the damage from the bombs and uh, the Dr. Boom itself yeah, might, you be, play enough, the Dr. Uh, Boom might be enough to uh, set up um, a lethal with Gromish Taskmaster. Even uh, if a brawl would be played, the the bombs will still deal damage. Second Dr. Boom, look yeah, at this. Yeah, I mean Dr. Boom is definitely a strong card in Warrior. Uh, you can enable those bombs with Whirlwind or Deathbite, so yeah. that's really yeah. amazing. So what's the play here? It's like playing a second Brawl, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a powerful creature. 7 mana for 7-7 seven, seven is a War Golem. And then you spawn two creatures. That's really great value. And he will kill the second one, or he 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 really f uh, was counting on killing him his own Sylvanas with that play. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> but that would have been kind of <laughs> yeah, that kind of required a little a lot of luck. I can say that the Sylvanas would have had to been hit by both bombs and for the exact amount of damage as well. Like, which well, was very unlikely. that's the game. Yeah, there's no way for him to deal with the Dr. Boom. If he played that Sylvanas earlier, he definitely could have been able to uh, deal with it by using Brawl, for example. Very well played by Neria. Good moves, good decisions, and he's winning the game. So, no luck here, I think.